welcome back, Maureen. Appreciate you tuning in and spending time with me to discuss solar financing options. Today, we're gonna to focus on a, on a particular case study for those that are watching that are interested in getting solar on your property, primary residence. You've got the uh, cash option, right? Which is gonna be typically the, the, the cheapest way to go, but it requires more upfront capital. You've got the financing options, and there's a whole bunch of options within that. There's high rates, low rates. There's high dealer fees, low dealer fees. So we did a, a really in-depth video prior to this one that you all can go watch on solar financing options. And that's the title of that video. Really recommend those that are interested to go check that out because you really went in depth. And the other option was leasing. So you're not owning the solar panels right off the bat, but this could be a very, very unique option for certain folks that may not qualify for the federal tax credit that is applied when you purchase solar panels. That's kind of like a big incentive to do that right now. So there are some folks that don't qualify for that. So we'll talk about who those people are. And then in your experience, who you feel is really ideal or qualified for leasing options for solar panels. So we're going to focus on that today. And What's really cool is you have a case study for us that we can actually look at a real life case study. I believe it's in Florida, correct? Yeah, this one's in yeah. Florida. So we have a real case study in Florida for a client that used, went with the lease option for solar panels. So I'm gonna give you the floor. Uh, if you wanna do a little recap or share any news, any updates in, in the industry, anything like that, and we can dive right into the case study. Yeah, I'm so excited to talk about this because honestly, a year ago, uh, I wasn't even open to learning about the lease options and offering them as a solution to people because I had in my in my head that they just weren't a great thing. You know, we always hear cash is king. It's better to own things, assets versus liabilities, even when it comes to cars. And I actually ended up leasing a car, a brand new car for my birthday this year. Nice. And when I did the math, it was actually cheaper for me long term to do the lease and then buy out the vehicle at the end of the lease versus the finance options available to me and maintenance was included and service was included. And so it just kind of got my brain open into maybe I shouldn't be so closed off to solar leases. I know a lot of people that were offering it, my colleagues, and they said that they had great results and it was a great thing. So I went and I did all the training. I was like, okay, wow, this is a really great solution for a lot of people, especially in this last year with how much interest rates have increased. Because last year I had access to 1.49% interest rates and we just don't right now. So the leasing is a great option for <clears throat> of course, now my throat's dry. Sorry, excuse me. The leasing is a great option for people who are retired, who are on limited income, who don't qualify for the 30% federal tax credits or the additional, like South Carolina, for example, has a 25% state tax credit in addition to the 30% federal tax credit. So if you qualify for tax credits, some places up to 55% of your system will be paid for. But that's only if you have, you know, a tax liability. And some people don't. So that removes a large portion of the population for really benefiting from a cash or a loan purchase option. Some other benefits of leases are they don't increase the cost of insurance because the leasing company, it's also called TPO, third party ownership. So the company that owns the solar system that is doing the installation on your roof, how it works is you design a system that is going to produce as much electricity as you use during the year. Same way, so the system design is the same. Whether you do, if you're working with a great solar consultant, they're gonna look at your electricity usage over the last 12 months, and they are going to design a solar system that is gonna produce 100 to 110% of that electricity usage. So you have a little bit of, of a excess amount just in case you start keeping the thermostat a little bit lower. You don't want to fight with your house anymore. Maybe you get a Tesla. It's I always find it's it's nice to have a, just a little bit of grace. Yeah. So you never want to get in the trap again where you are subsidizing and renting electricity from the utility company. So the system's the same, no matter which option you go with. With the, the leases, the third party owned leasing company, they are responsible 
for guaranteeing that your solar system is going to continue to produce how much electricity the design says it's going to. So that means there's nothing that you have to do that is going to require maintenance or any out-of-pocket costs for you. They warranty everything. If something happens, if a hurricane hits, if a tree falls on it, if it just stops working, if you get batteries and the batteries go bad because they only last 10 to 15 years, they will replace the battery for free, essentially included. They were they have to do everything to make sure that it is functioning the way it was designed to function for the length of the lease. And insurance as well, right? You said? Like- so, yeah, so with the insurance, um, in some states it's different, but insurance companies are fine. Like they will still be okay if you get solar, but some of them may increase the premium. So as soon as you have it installed on your home, if you own it, let's just say you have USAA, you know, you got to call USAA, just like any home edition. You want to insure, okay, you got a hot tub. Oh, yeah, added- homeowner's insurance is what you're talking right. about. Right. So okay. sometimes there's a two or three or $400 increase in the annual premium because now you're adding the solar system to the homeowner insurance policy. Yeah. With lease, they don't care because you don't own it. So okay. it doesn't increase your insurance policy premium at all your homeowner's insurance. So that's another cost savings. Yeah. Um, there's also like in the state of Florida, for example, insurance is a big deal. A yeah. lot of people aren't even open to having conversations about solar systems because they've heard, oh no, I, my neighbor said their homeowner insurance dropped them when I got solar. So yes, that has happened, but usually it's because people haven't let their insurance company know they put a solar system on. Right. So it's, or they're just leaving the state of Florida anyway, but there are tons of insurance companies that are very supportive of solar, but it still may increase the annual premium now because you have something else you're adding to the policy that you want to have insured in the home. If if you're financing or if you're buying cash. Yeah. So it's just another cost savings of, of the lease option. So all maintenance included, guaranteed production, no increase in any sort of insurance, homeowner's insurance policy premium because it's the, the responsibility of the third party owner that you're leasing the, the system from. So in a way with a lease, you are essentially no longer paying your utility company for the usage of electricity. You're paying a lower rate to the least the leasing company so you're kind of just switching from one payment to another okay. but it's going to be significantly lower and so has there ever been a, a scenario or where the lease monthly payment option on the solar panels is more than a utility bill a, a normal electric bill? is that really just not the case you know it, it could be possible out there where certain companies there's a couple of companies that i'm contracted to offer leases through one of them is sonova mm-hmm. and I had a lot of great experiences with them but they actually when we go through in the system as the consultants there's only certain um i guess ranges of payment options that we have and it'll actually let you know when you're designing a system you have to see an initial savings in the first year it won't even let you make the payment more than what so i i don't totally understand how it works on the back end but there's safeguards in place so sonova will not even go through with offering a lease option to a homeowner where they are actually not saving money got it got it okay well, that's good to know as well yeah. all right so- awesome qualify if the home qualifies if there's a system design and i've had it before too where they just didn't qualify for a lease because there was maybe too much shading like we were able to put panels on the roof but it wasn't going to produce enough so the cost of how many panels we would have to put on the roof to produce as much energy they were like this is too expensive of a job for us relative to you know what we would have to charge them so it wasn't financially beneficial for the homeowner awesome gotcha so just to recap here when you decide to lease solar panels there's the third party ownership which is the i guess that financing company is that the who's yeah providing right yes. gotcha. and then they handle the installation the maintenance replacements the warranty it doesn't increase your homeowner's insurance and you get guaranteed production and the cost where we're aiming for it to be less and there are safeguards in place where if the cost of solar is more than your normal electric bill 
then it just doesn't allow you to do it. So it, so it's not like we'll get surprised 10 years down the road or something that my, my solar uh, bill is now way more expensive than my, what my electric bill would normally be. So we're not gonna get any surprises in, in that regard. So that's really, really awesome. So with that, anything else we want to uh, just touch on in terms of the general understanding of leasing? Yeah, I think if, um, if you wanna let me share my screen or pop that one image up of the graph. Absolutely. General, I think that's a, I'm so visual. So this is a great graph where you can just kind of see. So no matter what, and again, not every home qualifies. So I understand that you might not live in an area where, you know, panels are even able to be on your roof with enough sun exposure or in the right type of climate. So for those homes that do qualify and we do a design that works, you can see here whether you can afford to do cash or maybe you can still get access to a loan after some of the rebates. You know, those are going to be your biggest cost savings. But then you can see if you stay with a utility company, you're going to be paying. This is I cut the footnotes off at the bottom. So, you know, this is obviously general, but it's the it's the same graph sort of for no matter your home. It's always going to be most expensive with the utility company over the next 25 years because cost of commodities is going to go up. Think about gas prices used to be a dollar then. So there might be some little dips in between, but this is based on a conservative, I believe, 4% increase over the next 25 years, where the lease, no matter what type of lease you get, you're still going to be paying less overall cumulative for the next 25 years for usage of electricity through third-party ownership than you would be to your utility company. So then we can go into a, a specific recent case study, but that's, I think, just a good general overview for people to see no matter what, if you qualify, you're going to spend mess, less money leasing than you would to continue to just stay with your utility company. Good. Awesome. And just to uh, go over the, the ideal type of person for this, typically folks who are on limited income, as you mentioned, so limited income, tip, I would assume people who are retired. Right? People so, who are retired. Yeah, because that assumes that, you know, if you're on a limited income, chances are you're probably older, you're probably retired, unless you're young and you got, you know, severely injured or something like that and you're receiving, you know, limited income from disability or something like that. So yeah. limited income, retired. And also I would say um, even if you're W-2 or you're 1099 or you're, you know, some sort of entrepreneur, solopreneur, if you have a tax liability, but it's really low, because you get how it works is they the government gives you 10 years to use the 30% federal tax credit. So let's say it's a big system we would need for the home. And so it's a $60,000 system. So almost 20,000 would be given back in the form of a tax credit, but you already have a lot of write-offs, or you only have $2,000 a year coming out of a W-2 paycheck, you'll get all 2,000 back each year when you pay your taxes, you know, but it, it might not be enough for you to get the whole tax credit back. So, you Especially know. Especially if you're in that state you mentioned where it can be up as high as 55%. Exactly. Gotcha. Yeah, because exactly. the, the way the tax credit works, it's not like you're getting the whole lump sum up front in the first year. It's right. literally based off your tax liability. So if you owe four thousand dollars in taxes, and it's how does the math work again? Is it thirty percent of that number each year, or no? It's thirty percent of the cash price of the system that you get back in a tax credit. So right. Let me see if I can show. I can pull up one of the slides here. Yeah, let's do that. This shows the tax credit. If you want to pop that up, so this is the case study that we'll go into. But you can see that the cash price, so the design of the ha of the solar system that he needs to offset his electricity use, would cost forty three thousand six hundred ninety one dollars and forty cents if he were to pay cash. Okay. Now, net system cost is the 70% of that, which is the 30584 So the federal tax credit, the government's saying, hey, we will give you 30% of the system, which equates to the 13107 and 42 cents in the form of a federal tax credit. But he doesn't pay taxes because he is a disabled veteran. So if he were and also how it works too, people often think that they only have to pay the net cost if they have a liability a tax liability 
they don't realize, no, you still have to, whether it's with a loan or whether you're paying cash, you still have to pay for all of it up front. And then over time, you will get that tax credit back from the government if you have a full tax liability that would pay all that 13000 out over 10 years. Got it. Okay, so back to my example, if I have a tax liability one year of $4,000 that I would normally owe, yeah. I, I just simply wouldn't owe that. You wouldn't that owe them. And then if this was your system, you have 10 years to claim the whole amount. So let's say it was 4000 every year. So you get 4000 then year two, you'd get another four, year three, you'd get another four, and then year four, you'd get that remaining $1,107.42. So it would take you all, like, you know, four tax seasons yeah. to get your full tax credit. But if the tax liability was like $1,000, you know, or a little bit less, where I only have 10 years to claim it, exactly. I may not, I mean, I get all of that. Exactly. You know? So some people do have a big tax liability already, but they're so savvy with their businesses and, you know, they're able to claim all of it back with the existing write-offs. So it's not really doing them a favor to get an additional tax credit that they can't use. All right. Beautiful. Continue. Okay. So I'll go into this right here. So this was his utility bill when he called me to see if solar was going to be something that could help save him money he was freaking out you can see his his last bill this is how recent this was this is his literally last bill from his utility company in florida okay. so it's 371 dollars and eight cents and he was asking me i don't understand why is it going up and a right. lot of people, before that it was 364.59 yeah so i'm assuming this this client's been noticing you know that gradual you know increase you know year over year. Exactly. And then you can see, so this is what's really important for myself or any solar consultant to see is this energy usage chart. So we'll go through and we add up how many kilowatt hours a year they are consuming. And that helps us design the right size system. So he's consuming almost 23,000 kilowatt hours a year of electricity. And so a lot of people don't even realize how we get built. We get billed based on, and if you just take how many, you can figure it out really quickly. If you look at your utility bill and you see what the amount is and you divide it by how many kilowatt hours of energy used in that month, you'll realize with all the taxes and fees and everything else. So right now he's paying 16 cents a kilowatt hour for electricity. So even though his usage is not any different than it was three years ago, three years ago, we were only paying 10 cents a kilowatt mm. hour for electricity. So it's gone up 60% in the last three years where, you know, where we live in Florida with this utility company, but we are seeing that standard across the U S and some States, even more California has gone up significantly more in the last couple of years. So I would say that this is a lower range of what people are seeing across the U S. So if you're like, I don't understand why my electricity is going up and you have been fighting with your spouse or kids to turn the light. It might not actually be, actually, it's probably not anything to do with the fact that you're using more. It's just, again, a great thing that everyone can relate to is gas. You're not driving more now than you probably were five years ago, but you're paying $5 a gallon in some places versus $1.50 a gallon. It's just the same usage and it's going up. So this is what he was dealing with right now. So yeah. this is... Again, now that you understand how a system is designed, so you can see right here, can you see my mouse when I share my screen or no? Can't see the mouse. Okay. So Actually, if you look on the, yeah, no, huh? no, my, I see my own mouse, I can't see yours. <laughs> okay. No. So if you see the estimated yearly production, so that's what I look for. I need to make sure that the solar panels that I put on his roof, I can maximize where they are with sun exposure to have the least amount of panels that are going to produce the most. So I was able to put 40 panels on his roof. The system size is 16.2 kilowatts, but its estimated yearly production is almost 30,000. So it's a little bit more than what he's been using for the whole year. So this is the perfect, perfect system for him. And then we go back to this one image that you already saw. If he were to pay cash, it would cost him $43,000. Mm -hmm. a lot of money and he also doesn't qualify for the tax credit but here is why it's so important if we can find an affordable option for him because if he didn't try to switch 
how he is paying for his electricity now and find a cheaper option. If you look at the bottom left, he will be paying his utility company, FPL, $171,000 in change over the next 25 years just for continuing to live the way that he's living right now. So that is with a conservative 4% increase a year for inflation and increase of in commodities that the calculation uses. And you can see it's probably going to be more than that because it's gone up 60% in the last three years. Right. So $171,000 is what he would have to pay. So, and he doesn't really qualify for a cash option and loans right now with interest rates would be really hard for him to pay. So this is where leases can be so beneficial. So you can see right here, this is what I was able to do for him through a Sonova lease. So Sonova is going, they took the design that I designed and they are saying, yes, we will build that system. We will pay for it. We will install it. We will own it. You can see the estimated production is almost 30,000 over on the right. So they are guaranteeing that his system is going to produce that much every year and they will do whatever it takes to make sure that it stays that way for 25 years. We are locking his solar rate essentially in at under 13 cents. So he's paying 16 cents right now and it's going to continue to go up. And now he's locked in at under 13 cents for the next 25 years. So his payment will never be more than $243.64 for the next 25 years. And if you go down on the bottom, you can see the lifetime payment instead of paying. Remember on the previous slide, we saw $171,000 to FPL. Right. He's getting Means seventy three thousand dollars to Sonova, the third party owner who owns the solar system that will be on his roof. That he's essentially paying every month to use electricity to them, clean energy from the sun versus FPL. So he's going to be saving almost a hundred thousand dollars over the next twenty five years based on these calculations. And again, this is important to note on this slide that. If you are considering a lease option with a solar consultant, ask them about a 0% escalator when possible. It's not always possible, but you can see on the left, it says 0% escalator. So that literally means his payment will be the same for the next 25 years. It's never going to increase because I also had this option to give him. It might look better up front to 2071, locking in at less than 12 cents a kilowatt, but that's just for the first year. If you look over on the left, there is an annual escalator that's 2.9%. And the total lifetime payment at the bottom, you can see he'll be paying Zenova $95,000 over the next 25 years. Again, which is still about 80 grand cheaper than he would be spending with his utility company. But it is a little bit more because it's 220 this year, then it'll go up 2.9% for the second year payments, then another 2.9. So that's what we call an escalator. And there's 0% escalators, there's 0.9, 1.9, up to 2.9. And there's different options for each home. But if you are going to sit down and consider a lease option with a solar consultant, make sure that you advocate for yourself because a lot of times they won't mention this option because the way that they save money, it comes out of commission and it comes out of everyone off the top too. So a lot of them just go with the pitch of, hey, it's it's we can lock you in at a lower rate. This is a lower monthly payment right out the gate. And not everyone has the best intentions in this industry. I'm just going to say that. So just make sure that you're sitting down with someone who can walk you through with all the options and then figure out what makes the most financial sense for you right now. Because maybe you really need that initial cost savings and you can't afford the extra 30 bucks a month that it would be to have that 0% escalator. So I'm not saying one's better or worse. I just want people to really understand that there are different options sometimes and to know, you know, just to know what's available. So yeah, no, yeah. that's, that's really powerful for anyone that's in their retirement years like on a limited income social security pension 401k anything we can do to lock in costs right to avoid inflation increasing over the over the years to really this is a inflation proof strategy on one particular expense that can be like extremely expensive so 
you know, taking a look at the at the board here, just to recap, you were initially showing gentlemen's paying 371 on average per month, and that's not steady. Like this number will continuously increase. We're in Florida, so I noticed on the chart that what was it? I think May, June, July, August are your hottest months in in Florida, and his bill was you know higher. So he's got to deal with fluctuation just from month to month based on just these numbers. Can only imagine how much more it gets even with a 3% cost of living adjustment on the social security, the pension, right? Even with that, this totally eats that up just from yeah. one, one expense. And so most of us only look at our food and gas. Those are the most immediate things that we see in terms of things increasing on us. And when it comes to our electric bill for the longest, it's just like, it is what it is, right? Turn the lights off, try to use less energy. And that's that really doesn't do anything, really doesn't do much. Might save you $15 in a month, $25. Even if you kept doing that, being so restrictive with your energy, it's still gonna go up because it, it just keeps costing more per kilowatt hour, right? Um, and so you were able to lock in 243.64, which is a saving, so they, they can already afford it because they're already paying this. So we already know, hey, you can afford this, might as well not get the ex escalator on it, and you're gonna pay 73,000 over 25 years and, and we can map that out versus the 171 so it's a 97,000 plus dollar savings and then if they got the escalator like you like you mentioned you know everybody's got to eat so the solar consultant's going to try and you know naturally you're incentivized Obviously, what you just illustrated there was an incentive to basically sell something that looks more attractive for the client. Oh, instead of 243, it's 220. That consultant doesn't explain to them that that bill is not fixed and it'll increase. Then that's obviously a misrepresentation. Buyer's remorse will occur three, four, five years down the road. And they're like, hey, my bill keeps increasing. I thought it would be fixed like you mentioned and now you get that whole you know uh, sour taste for the for the client but the solar consultant made more money is it a significant difference or is it yeah like, like in that if you want to put it back back up here and there's other ways too i mean so this would have been a five thousand dollar difference but not not just for the consultant overall because you can see the total epc that means what essentially the loan amount it like that's how much the that's getting paid out to the leasing company, whereas here it was 43,000 or, you know, almost. So it's a little bit more than $4,000 that, that everyone's getting less comes off the top. So every company has a different way that they split to, you know, that they divide up that margin, you know, to the install company, to the leasing company, to the salesperson, to the project management. So you can just see as things increase and decrease it's it is different the only time that i would say i don't want to say the only time again like i said some people are really struggling and they need every little bit of savings that they can in the first couple of years so they're okay they think okay i'm i'm in a really tight time right now we just um are going to be increasing our streams of revenue in the next couple of years things are going to be really coming in so starting out lower and increasing over time is especially since it's always still less than the utility company might be okay. I just want people to understand really what they're signing and what they're looking at. Another, another time the escalator might be a great idea too, is let's say, you know, you're only going to be in the home for 10 years. And so you'd rather have the initial cost savings and capitalize on the really low payments now for the next 10 years and know that when you go to sell the home, it's just a simple transfer over. And so if someone, it, you only need a 650 credit score with all these leasing companies, these third party ownerships, and it's actually a soft pull. That's another benefit about the lease. It's a soft pull and it doesn't affect your debt to income ratio or your debt to right. credit ratio on your credit report. So, um, as long as someone's qualifying to buy your house, they're going to qualify to take over the okay. lease. And they're still going to be happy that they're inheriting a bill to That's lease a less. system that's significantly less than the standard market rate right now for electricity from their utility company. So it's not, you're not really doing the new homeowner a favor by giving them a 0% escalator with a fixed payment, especially if it's 10, 15 years into it. But if you're just looking at what's the best for you and your family over the short term, if this is not your forever home, that's another another time it could be beneficial in terms of 
finances. So, so it could make sense having an escalator could, you know, totally make sense. But in this particular case, you, you know, you showed the options and it was clear that for what this particular homeowner, you know, wants and needs, they're, you know, looking to just have a fixed cost. They're not looking to sell this home. That's, that's, that's the home they're going to be in. Um, so that made the most sense. It's less money for me, but it's the best thing for him. Yeah. You know, and so that's always what, you know, and I know you're the same way. It's like, it's, this is all about, it is technically a sale role, but it's like sales doesn't have to be this thing. I think that a lot of people have a bad taste in their mouth with or a heavy biff when it's done in integrity. Like we always are buying things that we're in need of, Absolutely. you know, There's, so it's the, the, what I'm saying is, yeah, just make sure that whoever you're speaking to with, um, you just feel like they're offering you something and explaining it all. And it's just the whole process is done with integrity with what's really the most beneficial to the homeowner and not the company or the consultant or rep or installation company. Like it gets to be a win-win for everyone. Beautiful, beautiful. Was Were there more slides you wanted to show on this particular case study, just so people are you know, fully aware of the whole entire project, what goes into this? I think that was it for for this one. All right, it showed the, the house. And that's a pretty big home. You know, it looks, looks like uh, inside about maybe 2,000 or more. Yeah, it's a 2,000 or more. And this is very common for Florida um, in terms of system sizes. As you can imagine, we are year round heat here. You know, we don't have winter, we don't have snow. So it's pretty much electricity usage is significantly high throughout the year. We don't have gas heaters we're running off of in the winter time. So mm -hmm. in other states, you know, I've done a lot of virtual solar installations in Delaware and Maryland and Ohio, uh, North Carolina. Um, I'm trying to think of New Jersey is pretty common, Pennsylvania. And they're, you know, six kilowatt systems, eight kilowatt systems, nine kilowatt systems. And they might even be bigger homes, 3,000, 4,000 square feet, but they just aren't using the same amount of electricity that we use here pretty much year round. So Florida is a great place to get solar <laughs> for many reasons. I, I agree, especially with the amount of sun, the amount of production. And yeah. so, yeah, this sounds like a really awesome option. I, I compare leasing solar panels in my mind, I compare it to leasing a vehicle. Yeah. Right? Like I don't have to provide so much cash up front. I can do no money down. I can negotiate a low payment and that payment is fixed for two, three years. And then I have the option to buy the vehicle out later on, which gives me the ability to, to save the money up, right? Cause it would be the, it would be the same as buying a car, right? Like when you, when you decide to either finance a vehicle or lease it, we can run the math and more than likely if you were to lease first, even with a, uh, a higher car insurance bill, right? You would lease it and then your buyout price, if you saved up the cash and you were able to you know, buy cash on the, on the buyout, you would end up paying less than the person that starts out the gate with a six, seven, eight percent or more interest rate on a finance vehicle. And that's kind of like where the rates are right now. I've, I've got clients that have five, six, seven, eight percent interest rates on their on their vehicles. Seven years, uh, some five, but I'm seeing six and seven year terms. So they got a much higher monthly payment. And in the beginning, you're fighting that interest, right? Mm -hmm. you're, you're getting charged interest up front, more interest up front, and then it reduces over time. So even when you're making extra payments, let's say, if you have extra cash flow, because it got your cash flow got eaten up by the payment itself. So now you're kind of like stuck. Now you're responsible for all, all of the maintenance on the vehicle itself. Whereas when you lease a car, typically you can negotiate the maintenance and upkeep, tire rotation, the oil change. Sometimes they'll even replace other things in there. If there's, you know, you, there, there's like really good things you can negotiate. Like I know I've worked with GMC and Hyundai and all of my Hyundai vehicles I've had, I, I never had to pay for oil change. Um, and that can save you, I would say over a three year period if the, I can't remember what the average cost of an oil change is, but I think it's in the 60, 70, $80 ish range. So we're talking maybe at least a thousand 
ish dollars or so over a three year period that you saved and then you still have the option to own it. So one thing we didn't cover was with, with leasing, do you have the option to buy the solar panels out? Like basically what are my options when the, when the 25 year lease is complete? and I'm still living in that home and I don't plan. Yeah. On so here's the cool thing that I didn't even know when I was already so excited about leasing and doing a bunch this year and saving people money, you own it at the end by default. If you want, there is no buyout price, the third party owned ownership, third party owned company in this case, Sonova, cause that's the one I work with the most. Um, they will come remove the panels if you don't want them on your roof anymore. And if you want, they just leave it because it actually costs them more to take it off than to just leave it. So you own it by default if you want at the end of 25 years. They offer two five-year increments of renewal. And so I asked them that. I said, well, if someone technically owns it, if they don't want you to come remove it, then why are you going to charge them five years of renewal? And essentially you're paying for extra warranty because if you own it by default at the end of 25 years, now there's not necessarily warranty anymore. If right. something were to happen, if a tree fell on it, if whatever, now yeah, it's okay. up to you to figure out how to fix it. And then of course, over time, you know, solar systems don't last forever like anything else or technology, you know, after 25 years, the panels are producing, you know, 92% as efficiently as they were in the beginning. So now you're starting to get into that time period of it's not going to necessarily produce in the same amount that it was before. So if you want to have guaranteed production, if you want to keep that. So one option is let them remove it, start a new lease with a brand new system and a new third party owned company at that moment in time keep the panels, own them by default, and then spend the money to maintain them over time and in, operate it yourself, essentially, not operate it, it operates, but monitor it yourself. Sorry, that's what I'm looking for. So and, or you happen? can a renewal. Okay, yeah. so what would happen, say this gentleman, boom, 25 years, then he renews it twice for 10 years, so a total mm -hmm. of 35 years. In those 10 years, does the um, payment change? I believe what they're saying right now, obviously it's hard to project 25 years. Yeah. My understanding is that it continues the same agreement that you had. So if you're on a 2.9% escalator, it's an additional five years at that same 2.9% annual escalator. So whatever those payments would be. If you're at a fixed, it's the same additional five years at that fixed. Got it. Okay. So as, long as I locked in a fixed cost in, in, in the beginning, it'll be the same. Now, what would happen after these 10 years are, are done and I'm still alive, still living in the home? Same thing. They will either come take it off or leave it on by default and then you own it. Own it by default. And then at that point, I would be responsible for any repairs, upkeep, maintenance of it. Exactly. Yes. Insurance, production, all of that. Got it. Very cool. Yeah. Cool. That, I mean, we're talking that's 35 years, you know, that's a very, very long time of having a, a fixed cost. And if we're doing all the other good things with our money, being good stewards during that time period, having a good savings plan, a good investing strategy, a good cash flow strategy, good lifetime income planning strategy, then we would have the funds to finally make that investment in, let's say, uh, replacing these panels or fixing them, repairing, having the insurance, whatever it may be, it's not going to be a burden to us. We're not going to be like so surprised that now I have to, you know, come up with some money to cover these things because of the $97,000, $100,000 or so in, in savings. What did we do with that money, right? So that's the other piece where I believe I would come into the equation is on the financial stewardship side. What are we doing with saved, right? It's like, hey, you no longer are paying this for the next 25 years. You map that out. That's over $97,000 in savings. Did we blow that money or did we multiply it? Imagine mm -hmm. multiplying $97,000 over a 25 year period. That could be multiple six figures. That could be even seven figures if, if used properly. Wow. So there's, there's like so much in just one expense that we all have in the United States. Your electric bill, your rent bill, those are the two things that always get paid no matter what. A phone bill might not get paid, 
a credit card might go late, a car payment might go late. But when it comes to your rent, mortgage, and utility expense, those are like priorities. So being able to fix that cost is something to really, really you ought to consider if your home qualifies. Yeah. So action steps would be to, you know, have a conversation with Maureen. Reach out below in the description. I'll have the link in the comments, and you can book a initial phone call where Maureen will take you through the entire process, right? And it's education over overselling is her model, which is yeah. the same for me. We want to equip you guys to make the best decision when it comes to your personal finance. Anything else you'd like to share, Maureen, before we go? No, it was, this was so, I'm glad that we got this information out there to share with people today because it's, it's so important and it's newer in the solar industry. And um, yeah, I'm just, I'm excited for people to learn a little bit more and would love to serve anyone or talk to anyone if they want to see if this is something that could help them. And I just love how you tied it all in with the finance at the end, because I never really thought about that. That's not my area of expertise, right. but oh my gosh, yeah, 97,000 over the next 25 years could be then potentially turn into seven figures if stewarded properly. Like that's- Yeah, like it's, that's very that's possible. You know, like it's like when we look at where I can put that money, where I can invest it in my own business, so much we could do with difference between 371 and 243. What was the savings on that per month? Let me see. It was three, 371 yeah, okay. minus 243. So we're talking $128. Yeah. And I'm sure there's someone uh, following one of my clients or someone that's a geek that will totally geek out on this and just say, okay, what could we do with $128 every month times 12 is $1,536 over 25 years. But that's, $1, it's going to be, yeah, it, assuming that the percent increase, like compound interest calculator, I guess. Exactly. It's like that $1,500. Could we apply that toward your business, which has the potential to multiply dollars? Or do we stick it in a Roth? Or do we stick it in your retirement account? Do we stick it in cash value life insurance? Like there's so many different things that we can do with that money that you could even say, all right, I know 25 years from now, I'll have an expense on, on the roof. I'll have to maybe change. I'll have to replace the roof. I got to fix the roof. So now you literally just funded, like, let's say you got a brand new home. The roof is only maybe two, five years old, whatever it is. And then you do a lease option with mm -hmm. solar, let's just say, and you're going to save a hundred ish dollars or so each month fixed, guaranteed, not going to increase your costs. Imagine you saving that money, just saving it and having it compound at somewhere around three to 4%, maybe a little higher over the next 25 years, you would have the funds to pay for a roof repair, if that were the case, or the replacement of solar panels once the lease is up. So it's like, if, if we could just be really good stewards over, hey, you made, you made a good move, you saved money, now let's not go and waste that money. Like, right. if we process it as, I shouldn't even count that as a gain, all right? If you look at it that way, like I'm not even gonna count this as a gain. I already was planning on paying my electric bill each and every month for the next 25 years. I was already planning on doing that. And now I just got back $100 or $125 or $75, whatever it is. Let's pretend as if you, you don't have that money and let's just either invest it, save it and have it grow, set and forget for the next 25 years and look at it 25 years from now. I, I don't think you'll be upset, right? Because it's money you weren't even expecting to to have 25 years from now. Right? So if we can think long term in that regard, 25, 30, 35 years out, oh my goodness, you, compound interest just does all the work for you. If you have that money in a guaranteed, you know, compounding location, or some kind of an average in the index and in Roth, anything, you, you most likely will not be upset. Yeah, I really don't see that happening. Along with your other cash flow, your other savings plan, your other investing money that you already were allocating, it's like a bonus, total right. bonus. So, so awesome good. stuff, awesome stuff. Thank you so much for, for spending you. time with me, educating my audience. They really appreciate this. I'm getting good feedback from those that already booked phone calls with you, that have done work with you. They have nothing but good things to say. So. I, I really appreciate you taking care of my clients and audience and everybody watching. I have a playlist on solar panels and velocity banking, how these things can come together. So this video will go in that playlist as well for you to enjoy, educate, and continue to make better decisions with your finances. So enjoy the rest of your day, folks. God bless, and we'll be talking soon.